Yo, what's going on boys? Sheena from Rockpout Sound. In today's video, we're going to be creating this sick ass virtual riot growl. And this is what it sounds like. So absolutely insane and monstrous. If you guys like that sound, make sure you guys do me a favor by clicking that like button. It just helps keeping the tutorials going. It gives me an idea of how many of you guys actually like this bass. So also, if you're new here, make sure you guys click that subscribe button because we have weekly tutorials coming out all the time you got nothing to lose click that subscribe button and make sure you guys smash that like button as well uh 10 serum presets for free if you guys want them scan this snap code that's on the screen uh and then once it pulls up on your phone all you have to do is click open website and it will take you straight to a link where you can download those presets that's all you have to do scan it with your phone and then it will take you to that link you can put that link on your computer whatever you want to do but Let's go ahead and get started in today's video. Now this sound is actually absolutely insane. I like this sound a lot. Um, and believe it or not, there's actually not that much going on. Um, so what do you say we go ahead and jump right into this. Oscillator A, we're going to go to our Spectral and we're going to go to Creeper. Oops, not Grimace, where are you Creeper? Right there. And we're going to just start by moving the wavetable around so we can uh, or the wavetable position around so we can get an idea of what this wavetable actually sounds like. So very vowel-y, really vocal waveform here. I kind of like this movement here. So I'm going to begin our modulation by starting the modulation just here on the wavetable position. And I'm just going to do the same kind of shape that I did in the original sound here. And I'm going to put this on trigger, one half and trigger. Okay, next we're going to go into our mirror. And this is going to mirror the waveform um, at different points. It's going to select a different, um, a different point in the waveform to mirror. So I'm going to move it at around this, what is that, 80 percentile mark. And if we turn the mirror all the way up, it gives us a completely different sound. So we're actually going to modulate this to go all the way up. So not sounding perfect, but you know, we are getting somewhere. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the unison up three. Now, this is actually a point that me and Nasco were talking about. Uh, actually, yesterday, um, we we're just kind of discussing what the optimal voices are, especially for growls. And, you know, we started talking about the three voices here. Um, the thing about three voices is you are getting more than one copy of the waveform to be played at the same time that you're pressing the note. But it's not interfering with the bass because you still have one mono voice right here in the middle um, while the other two are stereo. So the blend here is really going to make our difference here just to... Um, Make sure we have the mono voice as the highest here. And then um, we are going to turn this detune down quite a bit here because, you know, it is a growl bass. We don't want too much detune. Um, and now the random, this is going to make a little pshh effect, uh, kind of like what you hear in rhythm music, or I should say rhythm, not really music. Uh, I know I just triggered a million people. No, I'm kidding. More like 100 people that actually listen to rhythm. Oh my gosh, I'm just firing shots right now. Okay, <laughs> let's just go ahead and move on. Uh, we're gonna go into our filter and we're gonna go to high pass 24. That's what that sounds like, by the way. If you guys can hear the difference. Very faint, but it does really just add in a little bit extra tone there. So our filter, we're gonna move to our high pass 24 and we're just gonna modulate this up. Now this is going to start our vowel-y adventure. And we're going to turn up that resonance to give us more shape. Turn up the drive a little as well. And then the fatness is going to also boost that waveform up just to bring out the filter a little bit more. Okay, now we're sounding pretty good. And to the effects, we are going to turn on our, well, actually, um, we're going to turn on our hyper. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to turn on our hyper, our distortion, our compressor, our delay. 
Uh, I'm not gonna go with the phaser. We'll turn on our EQ and our filter. Um, and now we're just going to rearrange the order of these effects to go as so. We're gonna go distortion, EQ, uh, we'll go compressor, filter, hyper, delay. Okay, that's that looks pretty good. So the reason we're doing this is because first we want the sound to be processed through the distortion. Um, when we have other effects that come before the distortion, such as the hyper dimension, um, it'll actually really screw up the bass. For an example, it'll pick up the um, the extra stereo spread and the extra clip or the extra. I'm saying a lot of extra. Where they sometimes um, these are like a small delay plugins. I'm pretty sure effects here. And it'll pick that up and it will actually give it an extra, I keep saying, you know, what am I saying? Okay, it'll give it, I have to use the word extra, I'm sorry. It'll give it an extra um, clip or an extra release when we press the bass. Um, you'll also get another, another little tail, which we do not want. So distortion can kind of mess some stuff up. So we put it up first usually on our effect chain. If you watch my previous tutorials. And now into the EQ, um, this is just, kind of really harsh effect here, what we're gonna be doing. So we put it before the compressor, which is later gonna be turned on multiband. Um, and that's really just going to calm it down a little bit and just kind of focus the frequencies a little bit better there. Um, and then, yeah, it's pretty straightforward for the rest of that. Let's just go ahead and start here with the distortion. We're gonna turn on tube distortion and we're going to turn that drive, not all the way up, but just to about 93%. Uh, I, just, I realized that I, since I used the word extra quite a bit there, I might have been a little bit confusing as I just kind of was mumbling a little bit. So if you guys have any questions, drop that in the comments. I want to make sure I'm giving as much value as I can to you guys. So um, I'll be sure to explain anything that you guys need. But anyways, EQ, we're going to boost this bad boy up to about 16 decibels. And this uh, frequency here. We're gonna move down to, let's say 40, 50 Hertz. We're going to modulate this up. Okay, uh, let me turn off these effects. <laughs> so we are getting a little bit of modulation here. Um, and it's actually creating a nice effect, almost like a talking sound, you know? It's a really nice way to add a little bit more vowel to your sound. And we're actually gonna boost um, the same slope right here, just a little peak here and um, on the higher end. And we're going to move you to about, uh, we'll say, 2,300 hertz. Uh, turn on the gain a little bit. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Turn on the compressor and we're going to turn on multiband. That should even everything out, as you can hear. If I print this before. It's very slight, but you guys can kind of hear there's a little bit extra residue left over on this EQ that sounds kind of nasty. Um, so anyways, next we'll turn on our filter and we're just going to turn on our filter high pass 24. And if we play the sound throughout, as you can hear, there is still a lot of sound even though we're hitting these low areas. Now, if we were to modulate this onto the master amp to take away the low areas, so it's really just concentrating to this higher area, it still kind of sounds gross. It sounds really unnatural in this particular bass. So what I did instead was I turned on our filter and I went to cutoff and, or I turned on high pass and I went to the cutoff. So when we turn the cutoff on the high pass all the way up, there is very little sound being outputted. As you can hear, um, it's cutting out all the low end. So I figured if I were to move this backwards, it would be a really cool way to take out and subtract these extra, um, this extra sound here that we don't actually want. Um, so that's a really interesting technique that I did there. And um, that's all I did for the filter. Hyper blasted this bad boy up all the way to like 93%. Dimension, it's going to like, size is going very low, very high mix. Well, not very high, but pretty high. And finally, for some final touches, I just stuck on that delay. And I put, turned off BPM sync, turned on link, and turn it to like 20, we'll say 23. It sounds good. Turn the feedback to around halfway. 
And one thing you're gonna notice is once we play it, we get an extra release or an extra tail on the sound. Not what we're looking for. We like the sound, um, the effect that it gives while the sound's actually being played, but we don't want it to continue after. That's not what we want. So we're just going to take our um, envelope number one, which is gonna be the master amplitude um, of the entire sound, and that's basically the slope of it, and we're just going to modulate it with that. So it makes it much cleaner, and it just kind of subtracts that extra release that we normally get. And that's literally all it took. <laughs> Really easy sound here. If you guys like that sound, make sure you guys click that like button if you haven't already. Um, that's really it, guys. I'm Shane from Rock About Sound, and I will catch you guys in the next video.